I think most people consider me a genetic engineer and scientist who does pretty epic shit, I guess. But Yeah, you do do pretty depends epic shit. on who you ask. You're known for your self-experimentation. I think mostly I'm known for um, doing all the experiments that nobody in science is going to do because they're um, too afraid. So like, uh, you know, people aren't going to know what CRISPR is. They're not going to know what genetic engineering is. So I just wanted to cover those things in the beginning so that no one's totally lost when we, we start this combo. Genes and, and genetics, they're kind of used interchangeably. DNA, and it's basically what makes us us, makes us alive, gives us all the traits we have and stuff like that. In around the 1980s, we figured out how to change that in organisms, which was crazy. And one of the first things they did was start making insulin in microorganisms. So before that, you had to like grind up pig pancreases or something to get insulin wow. for diabetics. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. And that's what people use nowadays is um, insulin from genetically modified organisms. And then in the late 90s, they started doing experiments on humans. They called gene therapies, mm -hmm. which was trying to treat diseases and illnesses in humans. Um, by, you know, changing genes or supplementing genes and stuff. And then CRISPR came about in the past 10 years, maybe a little bit more. And that's just like a simple way to do genetic engineering. So now it's like really accessible to everybody. All of human history, all of the history of the earth and the universe, nobody's ever like made a choice about the genetics of organisms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. now we can do that now we can say like we want human beings to not get this disease or we want human beings to all be six feet tall or whatever here's the thing it's like you know i got my phd and worked at nasa and um everything everybody wanted to experiment on was like shit like i want to engineer a human that can you know have a tail or wings or some shit like that <laughs> like nobody wants to work on you know some boring you know fruit fly sex or some shit like <laughs> nobody does no but like so many people do because like yeah. that's what the grants are for like really you want to you know be creating the fucking future right you want right. to like right. make you know lightsabers and time machines and shit when I was at these organizations, special organizations, I was just like, why, why aren't we doing this? Like, why aren't we all like trying to create dragons and stuff? Okay. Because it was always like, you have to do experiments in the parameters of this. And those experiments were usually really boring. I don't want to measure how this like protein from a mushroom like interacts with you know, bacteria or something like it's yeah. not interesting. There's like three people in the world who care about that. But that's where all the grants come from and stuff. Is there a reason why the grants are just like, here's a boring thing for you to figure out? Like, what is the purpose behind that? It's like one of those issues that is built into the system. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is you have all these people who have boring ideas and they're surrounded by other people who have boring ideas and they just want to pat each other on the back and right. just be like, and, and there's not much diversity in well. science yeah. either, right? Right. Like all these people who are professors, it's all just like a specific type of person. I'm not going to call somebody out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's no, just like it a specific sense. type of person from a specific socioeconomic class that like went to specific schools and had specific parents. And it's like, it's, it's very homogenous. And so you get these very homogenous ways of thinking, right? Because people aren't like, I'm going to do something crazy and new and different. Because like, why? Right? right? So you obviously broke off from that. And you were right. like, all right, I'm gonna start the Odin, I'm gonna do these self experiments. Let's talk about some of these experiments that you've done on yourself. And yeah. the successes you've had the failures you've had. The first experiment that kind of got me a bit of celebrity was this microbiome transplant. And I think you know, page me and Paige and I talked about it a little bit. If you want to learn more about this, a really cool documentary on the New York Times website. It's called Gut Hack, and it goes into more details on everything. But basically, I replaced the bacteria in my gut and on my body with some from a, a healthy friend and tracked all the DNA changes, all the bacteria that changed. 
I tracked all their DNA. So I knew which bacteria were coming and going. And um, I showed that like you could change the bacteria in your body by doing one of these transplants, a fecal transplant, you know, that's one of the things I'm most proud of in my life, I think, is not being well known for just eating poop, you know, yeah. <laughs> for other things. <laughs> So wait, how did you screen mm. your friend to like, did, did they have, have they ever had antibiotics? Like what was the screening process like for that? First off, finding somebody to donate is like hilarious, right? Yeah. Because you can't just go up to somebody and be like, so have you taken antibiotics in the past year? Like have you yeah. had any like infections in the past year or any like sexually transmitted diseases or bloodborne illnesses? <laughs> You right, don't yeah. just like ask your friends that stuff. We, we definitely do. <laughs> so you're like texting my friends and I'm like, hey, so uh, how's your, you know, gut health? <laughs> and if they answered like positive for a few questions, then I'd be like, so would, would you donate some, some shit? You know, we all have those friends, you know, friend or friends who are just like, mm, I don't want their poop. You know? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Would right. you take my poop? Yours? Yeah. You don't eat anything weird. Okay. Yeah. I think I would take your poop. I would take yours. Thanks. But yeah. But yeah, I found one of my friends, you know, who was like extremely healthy, active, been in a monogamous relationship for a long time and like, you know, all, all this good stuff. And I was like, all right, accepted. It was successful, right? Yeah. And it was successful, um, both like health wise and also, you know, using the ex experimental data and, and seeing the bacteria composition of my gut change How everybody long? thought i was gonna die it was crazy they thought you were gonna die yeah i'm doing this wow Pe people have or not a lot but a few people have died well it's just like taking uh, antibiotics to try to wipe all the bacteria out and then taking some other like there's complications like I stuff could go wrong and mm -hmm. i didn't think i was gonna die and like most of the medical literature indicated i wouldn't die but like everybody was telling me like you might die and i'm just like oh fuck that experiment was like my first big one it was really epic it opened my eyes to like science being more than just experiments in a lab that are published in academic journals um science can be a form of expression and it can be like an art form and it could be entertainment mm -hmm. you know and i get hate for that sometimes because people are just like oh you're just like you're doing stunts and, and and things like that and it's like yeah i guess but like who cares it's like i'm not affecting you at all i'm just like, all. expressing myself finding things that i think are interesting and doing yeah. the experiments in usually a very rigorous scientific way and seeing the results after that is when i was really interested in genetically modifying myself because there really wasn't much accessible information on how a human would go about doing that and what they would have to do. And so I started doing all these experiments on myself using all different, you know, methods and things um, to try to get like DNA from another organism inside my body. And uh, the DNA I worked with mostly was this DNA from a jellyfish called green fluorescent protein. It kind of like glows, it fluoresces. And uh, it's really common for scientists to use this because it's just like really obvious and generic. But before that even, I was doing all these experiments like in my garage, by myself, after dinner, you know, all alone. And it was just, it was really nice. It was a really nice time because it was just like pushing boundaries and doing something really, I felt like was contributing to the advancement of society for no other reason than I just thought it was cool. I wasn't really into social media back then. So I wasn't like posting videos and stuff. Doing all these things was so much more pure because like nobody was paying attention to me. Nobody cared. Do you find that like having a, you know, microscope over you is like, how does that affect the way that you feel about doing these kind of experiments with yourself? Like, do you feel this weird pressure? Cause like, I can imagine if you're going into it being like, I'm just doing this for me to like get information and I don't yeah. really need the feedback from everyone. Thanks a lot. Like, does that affect how you 
present your information knowing that now people are aware yeah. of what you're doing? It's, it's a very complicated relationship, right? Because it's like, if I don't say anything, then nobody knows, right? If I do something like genetically engineer myself, which I did with some jellyfish DNA, I'm the first human jellyfish hybrid, by the way. People need to know that like these things are possible. They can do it, how to do it, all these different things. And so it's kind of like this situation where it's like, I could do it all alone and not tell anybody, but like, I feel like it's also my service to society to like, let people know that these things are possible because otherwise everything is always just going to be trapped in academia and with big pharmaceutical companies and governments and all this stuff. When it's like, I'm trying to liberate all this knowledge so that anybody can do this stuff. Right. And being an influencer, you know, I don't know if I consider myself an influencer necessarily, but like eventually you, you just like make this choice and there's like no going back, right? Yeah. It's like people are paying attention to me now. I think that your sub stack, I mean, I've read like several of your mm -hmm. posts. I think it's such a beautiful platform to for you to share what you're doing and also like your personal experience is kind of like interwoven through that. And I think that that's really cool. Like I was just reading when you were trying to see if you could grow breast. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Being transgender. Um, yeah. Exactly. And how cool that experiment ended up being so deeply personal for you and ended up being kind of like the first step in you transitioning. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. It was such a beautiful story to read. I don't know. I just think that Substack is a really interesting way for you to kind of share this knowledge. And I think that it's ultimately really great. And like, I know the term influencer has so many negative connotations, but I think that in this, in this context, it's a really great thing. Cause I'm like, I'm an introverted person, like at heart, somehow I got thrust into this situation where I had to learn to just like deal with all these things, you know, interviews and people. And it was, um, it's been pretty wild. Specifically about your transition. I thought it was interesting that you made the point that like biohacking and kind of switching genders is you said something like it was like, there's so much overlap. Yeah, and I wanted to know if you wanted to talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's been one, I think in my life personally, one of the coolest things I've ever experienced, which I think people don't understand about like transgender people. And I can't speak for all transgender people, but I know like every single day I wake up, I'm just like, this is so amazing and cool being able to change my body and have it look like I want it to look. And it's about like being a woman, you know, like there's so many connotations that come with that. Because I think there's a lot of societal constructs built around that. And it's more just like, this is who I want to be, whether it was a woman or whatever you want to call it. If you wanted to call it like alien, mofo, whatever, like <laughs> that's what I would want to be. Because yeah, that's how I've always seen myself. And that's what I've always desired. The fact that we have this ability nowadays to change biology, to do stuff like grow breasts and, you know, change physical secondary sexual characteristics. It's just like so fucking cool. And to me, it's so fucking cool because like every day that I get to like look at myself or dress or express myself through how I look, I'm always just like, this is so fucking cool. Like I always wanted to be able to look like this or be this way. And it's amazing. Biohacking is kind of like this idea that people are taking the power back to themselves, right? Because we've been slaves to our biology. Everybody has. Like, I doubt there's a person in the world who hasn't tried to modify themselves in one way, whether it's hair color or plucking their fucking eyebrows or wearing lipstick or something like we've all tried to do it. Tattoos, whatever. Like we've all tried to modify ourselves. And if we had easy access to be able to do bigger things, like I imagine a lot of people would do bigger things. It's just societal acceptance around it. That's kind of sucks because people are like, Oh, male, female. Or... And it's just like, what the fuck? You know, like, 
it, it's the societal acceptance around these things. And then the societal acceptance is controlled by the government and regulation and all these things. So biohacking is kind of this idea that like you can now have control of your biology yourself growing up in society, even though I was born, you know, male and grew up male, like there's still a lot of like a lot of dislike for the way I looked, and, you know, some of that was gender dysphoria for sure. But it's just like a lot of people, I think, suffer from that experience that are just like, I feel ugly. I wish that we could all just, you know, build ourselves how we saw ourselves. And it's like, you know, you look at society over time and where what we have decided was um, acceptable physical adjustments, right? Like I bleach my hair. So that was me being uncomfortable in part of my body and changing it. But you're going to put parameters around where people can do those changes. Like it just, it's like, what's the basis for deciding if something is okay or moral or it's just like. Yeah. Society is weird about this stuff and people are really weird. Um, and I don't, I haven't quite figured out why, you know, sometimes I think it's this Western religiosity puritanical thing that like our body is um kind of like sacred mm -hmm. and we should like protect it and it's like a temple and like it, it should be pure in all these different ways we can't do you know neg like disgraceful things to our body right. you know like tattoos at one time were were seen as bad or like using right. cannabis and like drink like all these things just change over time and it's just like why can't we just do what the fuck we ever ever we want to our body even cosmetic procedures that we have now that are not through dna adjustment took people risking their lives to figure out right like the first like oh for sure breast implant or the first yeah implant, for sure or whatever like all of these things so it's like to suddenly, I don't know, it seems weird that people would be like, well, we don't want to risk. It's like, what do you mean? You've had to risk it this whole time. That's how every, that's how science works is you like experiment. And yeah, I, yeah, for sure. And it's weird that people have this distorted point of view of all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. It's like how many like breast implants have changed over time to be safer and healthier and better. And mm -hmm. like the people who got like the first generation implants, you know, had a lot of issues and it's just like, we are always experimenting on ourselves. It's just like, you can only do it when everybody's convinced it's not an experiment. No. Right, right. It's so true. Um, why? So you had said recently um, in something I watched that you think humans are going to be drastically different than what we know them as now, like in a hundred yeah. years. Can yeah. Can you I elaborate think... on what you envision? Oh, I mean, to start out, it'll probably be all disease-related stuff, right? So there was a recent gene therapy right now that's in clinical trials, which, you know, you take this medicine, so it, like, it changes the genes in your liver and lowers your cholesterol. We never have to worry about people suffering from heart disease due to high cholesterol really ever again. What if you want to increase your, your athletic performance, or just muscles, right? A lot of times when we get older, our muscles start to, you know, shrivel. And that's why we fall and like break our hips. You know, older people fall and break their hips and all that shit. And so um, building up those muscles is a thing you'd want to do. And then you start to think like, oh, wow, what is actually a, a disease or, you know, what is not? And what should we change and what shouldn't we? And it's going to get, I think, pretty wild in the next 50 or 100 years when everybody fights that figures that out. I'm sure you spend like a lot of time talking about people's like fears and concerns with like what can happen. Like what's your fears and concerns? You know, we were just talking about this before we were talking with you about our own yeah. beliefs. And I don't really have any fears because it's already happening. It's going to happen. It's just, it is how we're evolving or what we're mo moving towards. And I think maybe a lot of the fears are overblown there's going to be the potential for things to go horribly wrong, catastrophically wrong in, in any positive advancement, right? There's never anything that is always a hundred percent good or a hundred percent safe. But I don't think that anticipating things going horribly wrong should inhibit things from advancing, but obviously there's like huge things to consider, but I don't think that 
focusing on that is beneficial because that exists in, I mean, we had a massive, we're still in a massive pandemic. You know what I mean? Like things can, the world can always suddenly just change and go horribly wrong. I don't know. I, you know, I I really like those takes. They're very, I think, um, thoughtful for sure. I kind of feel the same way. It's like, look at social media and stuff like that. Like we all know social media is terrible for us. And like the best thing about social media is like, what? I don't know. Like it gives us all a voice. There's so many things out there that have so, you know, have negative, um, that we don't really focus on or care about. And when you have something that has the possibility to have so much positive, it's like, well, yeah, it's, it's probably going to have some negative, like everything does, even social media where they're just like dumb, like we're going to connect to friends. All of a sudden it turns into this thing that's just like brainwashing us all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like I'm sure there'll be some negative impact, but like the positive is also so huge massive. and good. Like, Why is everyone so concerned about like designer babies if if why is that like constantly being brought up in like 2017 there was a scientist who genetically modified embryos it's already possible everybody knows it's possible everybody's just kind of like afraid and willing to take the next step because it's fucking scary he went to jail for you know a few years for doing this and especially when you're talking about specifically the science behind adjusting your DNA, people's DNA. It's like people immediately want to be like, oh my God, people are going to use this to do really fucked up things. Or, and it's like, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe. Or they'll cure cancer and like also affirm their identity easier. Like, sure, sure. sure, they could do crazy fucked up shit or they could also live a like a much happier existence so for sure it's cool to think about you know like um especially uh being transgender like i can take hormones and my body changes right mm-hmm. which is like really impressive honestly you know that like i can take hormones and like grow boobs like mm-hmm. it, it's it's amazing that that can happen but you think about like transgender people aren't the only people who have like dysphoria or who have things that they want to change about themselves or um, things that they would be happier with if it were different. Right. And you think like, wow, if we had the stuff like that accessible to everybody where people could, you know, create a body that they feel comfortable with, because we have no choice, right? I think that's the crazy thing is people are just like, oh, you're born into this, you know, shell Mm-hmm. that's your body and you're just supposed to deal with it like right fuck that why like why right. also why I can't like, i just like fuck with it all i want and right. like how i want it well people want to have parameters around like your body your choice and they're like but 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 these are your choices right the, your, your, it's your choice <laughs> yeah. to make but this is the list of choices that you can make and it's your like, body your choice but you can only make these choices these choices <laughs> Getting into just these like CRISPR mm-hmm. kits, just kind of pivoting from that, like when, if someone like Paige and I were to get these kits and want to adjust something in our DNA, kind of basing off of what we're talking about, like, is there a beginner's like, hey, you want to maybe... Our kits mainly show people, teach people like how to program the DNA so that they could do what they want, but we can't technically sell you anything that you would inject in yourself. Like you can buy human cells from us, like in a flask and like engineer those cells. Right. But selling this stuff to people, to them to engineer themselves is against the law. Right. So technically we can't do that. So we Got try it. to teach people, but you have to think like, if you wanted to change your eye color or something, like you got to inject yourself in the fucking eye. Right. If yeah. you're that crazy, like, that's like my worst fear is like a needle. I mean, I've never tried to change uh, somebody's eye color or, or something like that um, or change the eye color of somebody who is an adult um, or read any scientific papers on it. But that's like something we understand so well. It, it, it makes me think that like that's something that would possibly be easy and um, accessible as a cosmetic change for people. Um, the things that are just holding it back is really regulation around this stuff because, um, you know, experimenting on humans, especially for cosmetic reasons, isn't really 
acceptable and allowed. Mm -hmm. And most of the things that are being put forth obviously have like very severe me medical consequences, you know? What does gene editing mean for really like common shit people face like cancer, infertility, diabetes, like if we know the cause of it, then it's a lot easier to target and possibly fix. Sometimes things like diabetes, we don't necessarily know the answer to. That's not to say we couldn't create a gene therapy or something that helps the body deliver insulin when it needs it or something like that. You know, people come to me and be like, oh, can I treat my autism or my, my child's autism or something? And it's like, it's really hard because we don't even necessarily know what causes it yet. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really difficult to like, come up with a way to treat it. But I think there's so many applications and so many things that could be tested. It's just like the government and the regulation is holding everything back. And you think about like, there are people who are testing diseases, but as a pharmaceutical company, their goal is to make money. And that's not like, it's just like the truth, right? It's not even like necessarily a negative. Yeah, it sucks. But like, pharmaceutical company makes a drug to make money to make more drugs to make more money like do you also even really want the government having their hand in this right as much as you're like oh the government should be funding this it's like but do we trust the government to actually do what needs to be done and then if they can regulate it what will they do differently and how will they on one hand you want the government to do everything they can to, to help but you're also like i don't the trust government. them to help us yeah exactly you know i i hope that some people listen to it and it's me calling all these fucking venture capitalists and who think they're changing the world by investing in all these like B2B SaaS companies, you know, like software <laughs> as a service here to help you market better or like send better <laughs> marketing emails. You're not fucking changing the world doing that. Right. It's like, there are people who are actually out here trying to do crazy shit. Right. right. And you're not willing to invest in it because like, how is it going to scale? Well, it's crazy, though, because people already use medicine for outside of its intended purpose, right? There's this whole like ozempic like thing happening uh, right now where it's like all of these celebrities take this drug that's used for treating type 2 diabetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're using it to just get snatched. And it's like, <laughs> okay, like if we had like, okay, here's your CRISPR kit to give you a BBL, people would be like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> but they're like, hey, we're going to use it to help, um, you know, stave off certain like fatal diseases. And people are like, oh no, it seems a little scary. And it's like, what do you, what? Like, yeah. it's like, yes, you should also be able to use it to like, of course, modify yourself however you want. But are you only interested if it's like, I don't know, it's like people are already doing things like that or like abusing prescription Adderall to like go out and party when it's meant for people who, have attention deficit disorder. It's like we already kind of take science and apply it to how we want anyway, right? So it's like, in what context are we saying this crosses the line? I think it's when somebody has to take responsibility. I think that's the big thing about medicine and, you know, genetic engineering and everything like that. Like nobody wants to take responsibility for anything, yeah. you know, because nobody wants to be responsible for people dying. Eventually we're going to have to come to the point right now with something like, 60 drugs are approved by the FDA every year, 60. And about 75% of those are reformulations, which just means like it was an existing drug that they chained one tiny part so they can like have a longer patent on it or something. So you're talking like 15 to 20 drugs, new drugs are approved every year. And there's something like at least 7,000 known diseases or something like that. And, you know, more and more that we're finding out about with genetic testing. And it's like at the rate of 15 drugs a year, it's going to take us like 500 years or something. Yeah. To like, like right. has anybody done this math and like figured that out? Clearly not. Not at all. And also like treatment versus prevention. And like what you would be doing would be like not even both. It's like we're going to actually just change how your body exists. And yeah, let's just see what fucking happens. happens. You know, like, right now. These are the things that are actually going to change the world. Like changing genetics of organisms is going to fucking change the world. Making a new, you know, drug is not going to change. Will it help people's lives? Yes, sure. You know, 
I'm sure it will, and I'm sure you'll make money off of it if it makes it through clinical trials. But like a, a fifth diabetes drug, when we have four that work great, isn't gonna like shatter the global systemic issues that we face. Why do you think it's so important to make gene editing accessible and for everyone to have these tools? What are your fears about like regulations and about it only being accessible to few? Like, is this like your big mission? You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who feel this way where we feel like very restrained and held back by society and the government and the medical system. And the disparity between classes is just growing greater. The, the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Everybody's like, oh, if only I make more money, you know, then my life will be good. If only I, I do this, then my life will be good. We're all striving for this thing that I think doesn't really exist. And that's because it's not the money that matters. It's the freedom and control and the things we can do. And so many of those things are restrained, especially when it comes to our bodies, which is like the only thing we truly own in in this fucking world. It doesn't matter who you are, right? Like Elon Musk, whoever you are, the most wealthy person, you're going to die and all your possessions are going to be split and shared and gone at one point in time. The only thing you own is like your own fucking body. And, we're just constantly told what we can and can't do with it. So what happens if we could break down those barriers and challenge, you know, the systemic control of our bodies by making everything so accessible, so inexpensive, and so available that governments can't stop it, that nobody can control it, that everybody can just do what they want, right? Then they have no choice. They can try to outlaw it. They can't really stop it. And so it's just like trying to give people back that hope, that control, that power in a world where it might seem like we don't have much. Are there any fears and concerns that you've heard from people that you think are valid that you also share? Obviously stuff scares me because like you can't control everybody and you can't do everything. But um, I'm working with somebody right now. And I don't know how much details I'll give, but basically it's like somebody, one of their loved ones has a rare disease, Mm -hmm. illness that they're dying from. And they spent a bunch of money to create a drug themselves super fast to treat their loved one. And the government won't approve it and won't let them use it. And we've been trying to figure out ways in which they can... Um, go to other countries and have this administered and stuff like that. But, you know, when me or my loved one is in the same situation, there's no drug that can treat me. I come up with something and the government says I can't use it. Right. That scares me so much more because it's just like, Mm -hmm. how many times I've had to think like, am I willing to go to jail to help somebody develop a drug or do something, you know? It's super so- fucked up. And it's such a, it's so funny when people will talk about like, like you have to protect yourself from the government. So we should all have all these guns. And it's like, okay. And what if the government is, pre- is preventing you from actually getting life-saving treatment or yeah, like they just stop gender giving you insulin, affirming. Right? Yeah. Like they'll stop giving you insulin. They won't let you affirm your <laughs> gender. But, but then everyone's like, but we got to stockpile these guns in case the government comes for us. It's like, the government is coming for you. The government is coming they're for already, you. They're already here. They're stopping They're just like, here, here, have these guns that keep so you like, yeah, they keep you. We're going to take away all your other rights. Yeah, it's like, so it only, <laughs> this is like the only scenario in which you're like, we need to defend ourselves. Like, what about in all of these medical cases? Like, I think what you're doing is fucking amazing. And like, it is, we're so lucky that someone like you exists. Mm-hmm. Aww. Aww. Joe, you're the coolest. The coolest. We're your biggest Whatever. fans ever. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Y'all are oh the coolest. God. I'm really happy when Paige invited me to be on. I was like, oh, I feel like y'all make this stuff super accessible also, which is really cool because you don't present yourself as these like public intellectuals or anything like that. But you you ask really great questions and you're really thoughtful and, and and intelligent and that's super cool like 
thanks <laughs> yeah i was i was like wow cool That's, you know i mean i expected it to be a, a good conversation but i i think i was surprised at how how good it was oh well, thank you thank okay thank you so much yeah it's nice Enjoy meeting the you. Rest of your day. Mwah.